I'm Steve for This With Cars, and this is my 1989 Ford Bronco 2. I got this truck from the guys over at Junkyard Digs. Kevin is having to move all the cars he's accumulated on his channel from his parents' house to his house. He sent me a message that he has a few cars that he wants to get rid of, so I ended up with three of his cars, this being one of them. I think this truck was actually his brother Jesse's truck. And beyond the fact that Jesse tried to replace the fuel pumps in the Bronco, I don't know anything about it. What I have been able to determine so far is that there is an oil pressure gauge hanging out of the back of the hood and it doesn't have a battery in it. Let's get on to the first job, which is putting a battery in. Under the hood looks very familiar to me because this is basically the same as the Ranger that I built for the second Cheap Truck Challenge, which never happened. Over here, we have a hole where the battery should be. Let's fill this. Looks like these cables are color coded incorrectly. The wire that goes to the solenoid should be the positive. And this red wire, which goes down to the engine, should be the ground. Need to be a little bit careful. The battery wants to fall down through the tray, which is rested away. I'm going to take the ground and just tap it on there. Make sure there isn't any big draws before I connect it. Safety first, bungee cord will keep that from falling out if it doesn't fall out the bottom first. Now let's go inside and see what happens. I was just walking past to get into the driver's door and I noticed that looks like someone has put a new master cylinder on here, but there's no fluid in here. So the brakes are probably leaking on this truck. Let's turn the key. Well, that's a good sign. I didn't hear the pumps though. On my Ranger, when you turn the ignition on, you definitely hear the pumps run. Let's crank it over. Yeah, it's probably not getting any fuel. It does have oil pressure though. Here underneath the Bronco, right underneath where the driver sits, is the fuel pump. It does look like it has a new fuel pump, and if we continue up in front of it, it also looks like someone has put a new fuel filter on here. Here's the wire that powers the fuel pump. I think what I'm going to do first is just disconnect this and double check that when you turn the ignition on, it is putting power down to the fuel pump. I have my voltmeter connected inside of that connector and I'm very careful that I'm only touching the positive wire. The other part of my voltmeter is connected to a good ground. I have the voltmeter down where I can see it. If I turn the ignition on, it changes to about 0.08 volts when you first turn the ignition on. So now I know it's a wiring problem. Just for fun, I decided to connect my multimeter up to the other wire. And if I turn the key, it does go to 12 volts. And if I crank the engine, we are getting battery power to the pump. When I first connected up my multimeter, I was going based on the colors up here at the top. And if you look above those butt connectors, they actually change polarity. The red one is connected to the black and the black one is connected to the red. So is it possible that they hooked up the pump backwards? It wouldn't be too hard to test. What happens if I connect the pump up in the way that it is shown on the wire harness going directly to the pump where this is positive and this is negative? Apparently nothing happens. So maybe the pump is bad. Let's make sure I did have power. Yep, I had power. I saw the power connected before I take the pump out. Let's tap it. Just see if it will start running. That doesn't seem to be making any difference. So it looks like I'm going to have to take it out. To release the fuel lines on the pump, pull out on these ears and the clip will pop down. Now the clip has popped out and you should be able to easily disconnect it. I also removed the fuel line at the filter because disconnecting the line at the front of the pump is about impossible to get to. But now I think I can just undo the bolts that hold the pump bracket in, slide everything back and remove everything without having to take out the drive shaft. I 
Okay, and that's how you remove the fuel pump without removing the drive shaft. The fuel pump itself just slides out of the bracket. Let's take this over to the bench and test it again. Now that we have the pump out, we can see how the wires are supposed to be hooked up. And if you see, that is a plus sign there, but the black wire is hooked to it. And over here, that's the negative sign and the red wire is hooked to it. So the pump was wired correctly, but backwards, if that makes sense. Whoever installed the pump, wired everything backwards someone must have realized it later and then they reversed the wiring on the truck so now i don't know what to think but at least we know how to test this pump correctly now now that we know how this is supposed to be hooked up let's try testing this again positive is on this side negative is on this side hook up my negative here touch the positive there okay, okay the pump is not running looks like it's seized up Here's my new pump. Let's try this one out. Positive right there. Negative right here. Yep, this one runs. Put this one back into the Bronco. But first I will have to swap the connectors from this pump over to this one. And the blades on these connectors are different sizes so they will only match up. The larger one is the positive and the smaller one is the negative. Now it's a pretty simple process to just connect everything back up. Now we can go back up and see if we hear the fuel pump run when we turn the ignition on. Let's listen for the fuel pump. Yep, I can hear it. Let's give it a go. Sounded like it was gonna start. There it goes. Oil pressure looks good. It's in the high 50s. Let's see if there's any brakes. Feels like there might be some brakes. Let's open the door and see if it drives. But before I try to drive it, there are a couple disconcerting things that I've noticed on this vehicle. One, doesn't look like there's any fluid in the front of this reservoir. And two, the rear of the truck is filled with a complete brake kit. That means there's most definitely something wrong with the brakes on this truck, and the last person knew it. So since I've never even seen this truck drive before, I need to start from the basics on my own. And we now know that someone previously has worked on this truck and wasn't careful enough to do it correctly. So I'm not going to trust anything unless I have tested it myself. I'm going to top off the brake fluid that way I can see where it is leaking, if it is leaking, and I'll know where to start for repairing it. Here we go. The brakes do hold me. Yep, they work good enough. Kevin warned me that this truck might have a bit of a lifter tick, but he said the engine was just fine. Sounds pretty noisy to me. Also looks like it might be out of gas. So I probably don't want to try driving too far. But at least the Bronco is to a point where I can move it around easy. And we have something to work with here. And luckily also, the brakes do work some. And that's all I have time for tonight. I have the Bronco running and driving, but there are still loads to do. So if you want to see more videos on this Bronco too, comment below and click subscribe.